is really nearly paper tea for GCSE biology, which means you've nearly completed your entire GCSE biology. And in this video, I'm gonna be going through some final essential tips to help you squeeze as many marks as possible out of that paper two to boost your GCSE grade. Hey everyone, and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. I'm Miss Estrick, and I've been teaching since 2009 in schools, but also online as well. So I've got so much experience of teaching students, preparing for exams, and also with the exams and mark schemes themselves. So I'm gonna be sharing with you my top tips to help you get the maximum number of marks on paper two. So let's dive into it then, starting with what is coming up on paper two. Now I'm gonna start with the obvious here, but I think it's a good place to start just to make sure everyone is clear. So first of all, these are the topics that could come up on paper two. Homeostasis and response, inheritance variation and evolution, and ecology. So basically topics five, six, and seven, and this is for AQA GCSE biology. So what to expect from the paper itself? Well, it's an hour and 45 minutes, which is 100 marks, which you've now done paper one. It's basically like that, but for different topics. So you can expect a mix of multiple choice questions, short structured questions, data analysis questions, practical questions, and also around two to three long answer questions worth four to six marks. Now for all of those types of questions I just went through, they could be based on the theory itself. They could be math style questions, but they could also be the practicals as well. Tip number two is don't forget to bullet point your answers. You are allowed to bullet point every single single question on your GCSE paper. And this will help you speed up, be more concise, and also you can quickly check, have you got enough bullet points for the number of marks the question's worth? And have you got a key term in every bullet point? So definitely do that to make sure you're being as efficient as possible and not writing really lengthy, wordy paragraphs when it's not needed. Tip number three is don't expect to be perfect. And by this, I mean, it's really easy to come out of an exam and only remember what you couldn't do or the questions that were really hard rather than the ones that you did well on. And you don't need 100% to get a grade nine. It's much, much lower than that. You can normally get at least 25% of the paper wrong or left blank. I wouldn't recommend that though, or just missing marks along the way. So in the exam, if you do feel you start to panic a bit that you can't answer a question, move on, circle it to come back to and have a go at another question. If you've got time, come back to it. But just remind yourself in the exam to try and calm yourself down. No one gets 100%. You don't need 100%. It's fine if you do come across a question you can't do. Number four, very quickly, I did mention this last time, but I'm going to say it again. In terms of your timing, you have an hour and 45 minutes, you have 100 marks. That works out at about one minute per mark. Now, some questions are not going to take you one minute to do, and sometimes you might have a three mark question, which doesn't take you three minutes to do, particularly if it's just a quick joining up the boxes, or maybe a maths question that you do really quickly. But some of them do require that amount of time because you have to read through all the information carefully and it might be a longer answer to do. But the reason I point this out is if you notice that you're doing a question and you're getting stuck and it's maybe three marks and you start to realise you've probably spent at least five minutes on it already, maybe circle it, move on and come back to it if you have time so you don't end up eating into too much of the exam paper on that question. Tip number five is about the required practicals. Now you might have seen my practical video that I did already for GCSE and if not you can check it out here where I used Miss Messam's data analysis and her predictions to come up with potential suggestions of which practicals might come up on the paper. Now this is just based on data analysis though so don't think we've got any insider knowledge but based on which practicals have come up recently versus haven't here is what potentially might come up for paper two. For triple science the most likely ones based on data analysis are the field investigations, which is the sampling in ecology practical, and the decay investigations. Those two haven't come up as much recently. For combined science, it would be maybe reaction times and also the field investigations. So be ready to do things like describe potential methods or suggest or identify independent variables, which are the ones you're deliberately changing, or dependent variables, which are the ones you're measuring, or control variables, which are the ones you need to keep the same. You might 
might have to analyze graphs or tables. You might have to suggest how to improve methods, or it might be linking the practical results to an explanation linked to the theory to say why you got those particular results. And of course, there could also be maths questions linked to the data as well. Tip number six is your clarity of answer, basically meaning your use of key terms and keywords, because we know how specific the mark schemes are. You need to make sure your answers are really specific. And if you're not sure on the sorts of key terms that you need to know, I do have all of that covered in my GCSE notes. You can actually just purchase paper two of my notes and it covers all of the theory. It goes through all of the key terms that you need to know as well. Examiner's tips written by an actual examiner. Plus you have topic summaries and end of topic retrieval questions. So if you do need a last minute boost checking those key terms, then I'll link that in the description below for you. So that is it. My final six tips to help you squeeze the maximum number of marks out of paper two to boost your GCSE grade. Good luck everyone, you are so close to finishing GCSE biology, best of luck and if you're doing A-level biology hopefully I'll see you again in September but for now that is it, go smash your GCSE, I'll be thinking of you all during the exam.